Welcome back to the C-Suite. I'm Danielle Deshaw. On this segment, if your organization is looking to add a lot more depth to your diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, initiatives, this is a segment for you. Dr. Georgette Zanatti is the Executive VP at Corporate Class. Her specialty is helping organizations to create the depth and sustainability with their DEI programs. So she's going to be talking to us how you can really create these initiatives that are going beyond just checking the DEI boxes. So welcome, Dr. Zanatti, for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk to you about this because we're really moving the conversation forward around companies with their DEI initiatives. And really when it comes to them, how can companies know if they are just ticking the boxes of you know, having DEI programs, initiatives, or if they're actually truly getting some depth to them? And I just want to start by saying there's a difference between you know, diversity and inclusion. They're not the same thing. We kind of put them in the same bucket, but they're two very different things in organizations. So I often like this quote that I use all the time that it says, you know, diversity is about counting the numbers. Inclusion is making the numbers count. And so uh, that is that is the harder part. The inclusion piece is much harder. So many organizations will talk about diversity because it's things that you can sometimes see and count and measure, um, whether it's uh, you know different cultures, ethnicities, languages, or whatever people may wish to um, be able to present in an organization. The inclusion piece really speaks to the belonging and the changing the mindset organization culture. And that requires a lot more work. And to, you know, to move beyond ticking off the box, it's not just, a, you know, a statement, it's not just a DEI committees, you know, a lot of companies have things called ERGs, employee resource groups, they have them, but the question is, are those resource groups actually influencing strategy, are they influencing policy, or are they just educating and, and are having events and so forth. So the question is really, how do you do that? So corporate class, one of the things that we focus on and something that's very important to us is taking what we call good intentions and moving beyond implementation to integration. And it's sort of, it's that arc of change that's really critical for organizations to actually see some measurable outcomes at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And really what at corporate class, you're talking about, you know, really working when it comes to these DEI programs, Inclusive organizations really start with leaders who are courageous, vulnerable, and accountable as well. Can you explain a little bit more about that? So, you know, when it comes to diversity and inclusion, I think what's really important and what we're seeing and, and leaders who have done really well are ones that have thought about their organization as a whole, uh, being able to understand, acknowledging when they don't know something and being able to say, okay, how can I make myself, a, you know, a, understand someone else's, you know, challenges being able to do this. So there's kind of a bit more in touch with what's happening in the world. But also, I, you know, part of it is being not just empathetic, but being vulnerable. And part of that is being able to say, I know what I know and I know what I don't know. And also that I'm willing to kind of take this leap and invest in being able to change organization culture. And, and so that those are difficult conversations to have. And so some of the stuff that we do, we work with, you know, how do you create psychological safety in the workplace so that you can have difficult conversations? And so how can organizations start and how can they shift from having the conversations to actually taking action? So I would say, you know, one of the things that we talk about often with companies is, you know, first you start off with some training but also there's assessments that we do. So we do a lot of really great assessments that give you a sense of what I'm gonna call the baseline, but there's different assessments that we have depending where you are in the organization. So we, we have assessments for employees, we have assessments for leadership, we have assessments for the boards, and we bring that all together in, in what I call a bit of a toolkit to kind of say, here's what, what the benchmark is saying. So what maybe you think you're doing and how it's actually seen <laughs> may not be the same. And so how do you bring that together? And then I always tell people, just because you think you're measuring, are you measuring the right things? Are you measuring the things that matter? Are you measuring the things that are going to have impact? Uh, so you could, you know, I, you know, I have an example of someone that called me and said, oh, well, we have 82% women in our company. And I was like, okay, but where are the women? Are they in the senior leadership? Are they in the C-suite? Or are they in the front lines? And so, you know, what does that inclusion piece look like? And so those are very important things for us to be thinking about. So when we work with organizations, we talk about what is it you want to accomplish? What does your strategy plan looks like? So there's lots of, you know, I've looked at DEI plans and a lot of them are the same. It's in some cases, it's almost like you could plug out one company and plug in somebody else. So is it true to who you are? Is it true to, you know, the, your, your industry? Is it true to where you want to go? And how are you going to get those things done? And it's nice to be able to have a statement. It's nice to be able to have all the these ideas but the reality is if you don't action them 
in a thoughtful way where you're going to see ROI, return on that investment, then you're not going to get the change that you're looking for. So mm -hmm. uh, there's many ways we do that. We do the tools, we do the baselines, we do consultations, we have conversations, we do the training. And then at the end of the day, we help them figure out how they can see the change for themselves. And it's got to be authentic to who the company is, to who the leadership is. Because if you don't have leaders who actually support that, that plan, you're not going to get to where you need to go. And I like how you said really how it's almost like the company needs to really almost create a, a values piece and a statement or a mission statement to kind of start there and truly understand where they want to be and who do they want to be representative of and then start building, you know, kind of the actions around that. We had a session with a group of people that it was mostly mostly men and there's a few women. And what was interesting in one of the programs that we were doing in one of the breakout sessions was the men had no idea that when the women were dealing with clients, mostly male, they did not want to deal with the women. They wanted to speak to a man because it was a male related industry. It was a very sort of male dominated industry. And when we had this breakout session, the men said, oh, we had no idea you were dealing with this, but now we're going to support you. So there are changes that can happen when you have the right conversations in the right spaces and shine a light on where the challenges are, but also have an action plan. So not just identify the problem, but, you know, how do you have, com com you know, competent conversations with your colleagues? So then you have advocates and allies and sponsors within the team to, to change things, not just for, you know, women, but for, for everyone in, in the inclusion and across, you know, the diversity spectrum. Mm -hmm. I really like how you mentioned the word like allies and really kind of allyship because that's really important for companies to be able to kind of take these and really move from the tick boxes to get those true depths and strategies on their DEI initiatives. I think these are very important things and how you create that in the workplace is very important. So it's great that I said you can have all the, you know, the, the inclusion groups, wonderful. But if you don't have a mentorship program or what I would call a sponsorship program, more important than mentorship for me, it's a great way to show allyship. And there's a difference between mentorship and sponsorship. You know, mentorship is where you're giving people advice and helping them kind of move along the spectrum. You know, sponsorship is where you say, you know, Danielle is a superstar. And I think she should be sitting on this committee or she should be, you know, next time we have this really big role, let's give her a chance. We think she's got the potential. Maybe you don't think she's ready yet, but I think I see stuff in her. Let's give her an, and that to me is the more important. And the women who've reached the C-suite, they've had sponsors, not just mentors, they've had sponsors and that really helps. So we know that's really important for folks. I think it's really important to kind of highlight that corporate class is really helping companies and organizations to continue the conversations and you're doing it by also changing and bringing more value to what you're being able to offer a corporate class. Do you want to share more about that? Yeah, so we are launching, so you're the first to know, uh, we are launching a Center for Diversity and Inclusion. And within that, uh, we are going to have uh, programs for women. We, we have a master class for women. We've got an empowered mindset program for women, but we also do all of our diversity and inclusion training. So it's our training on, on DEI. We've got anti-racism workshops. Uh, we also have a number of other initiatives, including the assessments and the tools. We've gonna, we have blogs. We've got all sorts of other things. We've got people like um, the Honorable David but only as part of our diversity and inclusion. We've got a partnership with Rotman uh, at the University of Toronto. So we're very excited to be launching this because we do believe that this is going to be something that organizations need. And it's a center where we want to develop partnerships with organizations in a way that allows us to move the conversation forward and be able to actually make change and be able to have outcomes that we can share more publicly with people so we can learn from each other. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Zanati, for having this conversation with us and with our viewers about really creating depth within DEI initiatives and organizations. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And to our viewers, thank you for being here as well and for choosing to be spending time with us. We will see you next time on The Seat Week.